Yep, it's the fastest SSD enclosure I tested so far. Let's talk about it. Okay, so we have a fun one for you today. I got my hands on an Acasis Thunderbolt 5 80 gigabit per second SSD enclosure right here. And I'm gonna be testing it, kind of a perfect marriage with the M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting over there. And we're gonna just see how fast this thing really is. Now, I don't wanna spoil this video for you, although I may already have done that, but this is actually gonna be the fastest SSD enclosure I've ever tested by quite a bit. Now, before you jump ahead, I have everything in the timeline. You can jump wherever you want. You may wanna watch the whole video because what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you why the cache in the drive you put in here is so important to the speed and how it's gonna perform on long data sets. And also the, the actual cache in your M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting back over there is ultra important as well and why that makes a difference sometimes when you're testing this. So sit back and relax. We're gonna show kind of a whole bunch of different things here, including we're gonna do speed tests on this in Blackmagic, and we're gonna be doing 100 gigabyte data movement tests on this with a couple different drives. So if you're interested in seeing this on the fast this is one I've tested so far. Just sit back and relax and let's get into it. Now, before we get into the speed tests on this, let me go ahead and just introduce the enclosure really quickly for you with some kind of basic specs here. So what I have here is I have the Acasis. The model number is gonna be TB501 Pro. TB501 Pro, maybe I'll put the number up here so you can see it. I'm gonna put that down. If you look over at Amazon, you're gonna see it right here. So it's called the Acasis 80 gigabit per second. It says Thunderbolt 5 as well, M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure, 299 bucks right now. So you're gonna say, well, you know, I can get other ones Thunderbolt 4 for quite a bit cheaper. First of all, before you say that, this is Thunderbolt 5, technology is fairly new. Plus down here, you have a 20% 20, 20 coupon going on right now. So you get about $60 off this, which brings it down to about 240 right now. And of course, in the look for sales and things like that as well. I'll have a link in the video description also to check a little bit more of this out. Um, now the build quality in this is something that I, I totally love, right? It's made out of full aluminum, number one. Number two, there's a face plate on the bottom that just clips right off. Um, you don't need any screws. You can take it on and off. It basically snaps on and off very, very easily. There's really no effort to it. It's also got in a fan included in it sitting right here on top and I'll show you some pictures. And that fan turns on when it needs to turn on if things kind of get a little hot in there and it works really well. You almost never hear it. There's a button over here that you can press a couple times to change the speeds of the fan if it's a little too loud. Although I, like I said, it was very audible and it wasn't audible to me at all really. So I think it worked really well. So overall, I think, you know, the build quality is, you know, a five out of five on this as far as these go. And I had no problems whatsoever with it. Now, all the information is gonna be in the link in the video description, but let me just go through a couple stats here. So this is again, of course, it's Thunderbolt 5 compatible. It's USB 4 version 2.0 compatible as well. And then it's backward compatible with Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 3, USB 4 version one, and uh, USB 3.2, 3.1 and 3.0. But again, you don't really wanna use those. You wanna use Thunderbolt 5 really if you're gonna be buying this for the extra money because that's how you're gonna get the speeds I'm gonna be showing you. All right, so what do you get in the box? You get a couple key things. You get a Thunderbolt 5 cable sitting right here, and I'll show you some close-ups of that as well. You also get some heat tape in here um, sitting right here. You get two different versions of this, one thicker, one thinner. You also get a little rubber stopper that helps you put your actual drive into the enclosure. And then you get this little device here, which is kind of a little plastic piece. I'll show you the directions. You can pause it there if you wanna see them. All it does is it spaces out for smaller drives. You stick it in there, it helps you space it out and put the heat tape on. So it's nothing to really worry about. It's super simple. Um, overall, like I said, everything works just really easily in the box and everything you need is here. Oh yeah, and one last thing here, if you look at this diagram, this does take the M key, NVMe PCIe, and the M and B key, NVMe PCIe. This does not take SATA drives, I just wanna let you know that. And here's the different sizes here, and you can see that plastic piece right here where you kinda of break it off depending on the size of the drive you need, and it kinda of helps you fit the drive in. But, you know, most people don't have those other small size drives, but if you do, it's super easy to fix. Now, before I test the speed of the enclosure sitting right here, I wanna test the speed of the M4 Pro Mac Mini sitting over there, and you're gonna find out why in a second. But let's go ahead and test this really quickly here. So let me go ahead and set up Black Magic here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and test this. You can see that on the writes, it's around 5,500, and on the reads, it's around 5,132. We're gonna get around 5,500 again, and around, what, 5,150 again. So you can see that the internal speed of the actual Mac Mini itself, we're not talking any drive in here, over there on the Mac Mini, it's actually really fast, right? But Blackmagic can be deceiving sometimes, and that's what we're gonna show you here. This is important to understand. 
So this is key here. Based off my testing on the M4 Pro Mac Mini over there, I'm testing that drive. When you actually write to that drive and you do a lot of data, maybe more than 30 or 40 gigabytes written basically to the, to the internal drive in the Mac Mini, the Mac Mini will actually slow down. So while those speeds look really impressive, in, re you know, in reality, it's gonna slow down on you and you're not gonna get those speeds all the way through. And the reason that's important to know is because obviously when we're testing something that can be potentially as fast as that, if that slows down over there, then this may not look as fast. That's just number one, to, and, you know, that's kind of, important to understand. Number two is I'm going to be testing that the Mac mini that I have is the 512 gigabyte version. And that cache kind of craps out around, you know, 40 gigabytes, somewhere in that range. It's going to slow down when I'm copying to it. Now, if you get a bigger one, like a one terabyte Mac mini or a two terabyte Mac mini, the cache is going to be larger on those drives. And they're going to be able to maintain a faster speed throughout longer data sets. That's important to understand about the Mac mini before we actually start testing the enclosure. Now it's finally time to test the enclosure, thank God, right? But in order to test that, I actually need to put a drive in there. And so what drive am I gonna be using to test the enclosure with? Well, for starters, I had this in my office. If you look over here, this is the Samsung 990 Evo Plus SSD, and it's the one terabyte version over here. That's important, I'm gonna get back to that in a second. You can see on paper here, it says it's up to 7,250 7, megabytes per second as far as the speed on this thing. So that's actually, obviously, really impressive on paper. But let's go ahead and test it. We're gonna throw it in here into the enclosure, and then we're gonna do a black magic test with this drive in the encases enclosure, and let's see what we get. All right, let's go ahead and start the test here. And if you look at my screen, it's over 6,000 on the writes here on Blackmagic and 5,592 on the reads. And again, we're close to 6,000 again. And then where are we? About 5,600 on the reads. So really impressive with the Acasis enclosure, Blackmagic, and this drive here, the Samsung. But we always know that this is not always the true test, right? We have to move data. So now we're gonna do a 100 gigabyte data test. Okay, for the first test, we're gonna take 100 gigabytes of data on the M4 Pro Mac Mini over there, and we're gonna transfer it to the Acasis, like we're backing up to this. This is actually gonna be pretty impressive. So let's get ready for the test here. Now, if you take a look over here at my screen, I actually have a timer down here, you can see it, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag this into the actual Acasis drive and enclosure here, and I'm gonna go ahead and start this. Now, I was a little bit slow there, but we can see how fast it's moving. Now, this is 100 gigabytes of data, mind you. It's about 10 different files. It's not a million files, keep that in mind. But still, we're moving 100 gigabytes of data here, and we're moving it again from my Mac Mini over into the Acasis case here with the Samsung Drive. Look what we got here, 16.3 seconds only, 16.3 seconds. That is pretty amazing for a speed, obviously. So what does they equate to? Now, if I didn't see it myself, I wouldn't even believe it. It actually comes down to around 6,100 megabytes per second. Now, I might have been a half second slow in starting the timer, and even so, I did it a bunch of times here, and I was averaging at least 5,900 megabytes per second up to around 6,000 megabytes per second. So super fast when you're copying data to the enclosure with that Samsung drive. Okay, now we're gonna be moving data from the actual enclosure here, if you look at my screen here, over to my Mac Mini. So let's go ahead and drag it over here, and we're gonna time this. I'm gonna get down here and start timing it. So you can see that this is gonna be moving here, but ultimately, you know, we only had about 17 seconds last time when we were going the other direction, but this time, it looks like it's taking gonna be take a little bit longer, right? Let's just see where this kind of hashes out. It's still moving here, we're about 13, 14 seconds. Again, this is 100 gigabytes of data that we're copying from the enclosure here over to the Mac Mini. But look at this, it's taking a little bit longer here. We're gonna let this kind of hash out here. And it looks like it could be under 30 seconds, but let's just see where it finalizes. So 27.7 seconds right there. Um, so let's go ahead and actually see what we have over here. This is actually important. What, what do we get on the megabytes per second on this reading? This is important. So when we move data that way, it only comes out to around 3,703 megabytes per second. When I say only, it's still super fast, but it's still slower than we saw at 6,000 going the other direction. Now, why is that? And I'm gonna show you, it's not really the fault of this, right? This is what happens when you start testing things that are so fast and the drive on the Mac Mini over there isn't as fast as this. And this is gonna be important to understand. So what's happening? Well, the data moving from the Acasis is actually moving so fast, it actually kind of overwhelms the Mac Mini. So what happens basically is the SLC cache fills up on the Mac Mini, and then it switches over to the slower TLC NAND. And basically remember that you know, we're copying to the, the drive over there on the Mac Mini, and that drive can't keep up. Remember I told you earlier that it kind of gets slower around 30 or 40 gigabytes of throughput there because it fills up that cache and the speed slows down. Well, this thing's trying to push data to it, but it gets kind of slow. And if you have a faster, you know, a, a Mac over there with a higher limit, I only have 512 gigabytes over there on the Mac, but if you have a one terabyte or a two terabyte version, that cache goes up, which means that this could be a faster connection or a faster throughput overall. It's not gonna slow down like that, and we're not gonna get those slower speeds. So if you want the fastest kind 
combination, you need a Mac like that with either one terabyte or two terabytes of space versus the 512. But there's two sides to the story and there's two drives. The Samsung drive right here that we put into the enclosure, it also has a cache, but the cache is much higher. So if you look over here, over here, this is from Tom's Hardware. The cache on my one terabyte Samsung drive is 108 gigabytes, 216 on the two terabyte version, 432 on the four terabyte version over here. So what that basically means is I can copy with, when I have this one terabyte version, the cache is 108 gigabytes. I can, con you know, I can copy up to 100 gigabytes of data and it never reaches the cache limit. If it goes past 108, it's gonna slow down a little bit. If you get the bigger version of this drive at 200 and something, you can copy over 200 gigabytes before it slows down. So now we're seeing that, you know, the cache on either this drive or the cache on your Mac mini make a major difference when you're testing an enclosure like this. The enclosure can handle it, but you need the right drive, you need the right Mac mini, you need a whole bunch of things going correctly to get the good speeds. So when you're testing it, you don't get the same speed as me, you have to understand that. Okay, so next we're gonna try a completely different SSD drive in the Acasis enclosure down there. And, th and this is gonna make a lot of sense in a second, so watch this for a second. Here's the actual drive over here. We're gonna try the Western Digital Black SN770, it's one terabyte, you can see it's 73 bucks. Now this is a slower drive than the Samsung. It says only up to 5100. If you remember the Samsung drive was capable of up to 7000 like on paper. But we're gonna see how this does in the enclosure even though it's slower. But there's one key part here, and I'm gonna bring this up over here. If you look at this, I, I found this online and it says this is the Western Digital Black SN770, one terabyte. If you look here, they did some kind of tests on this and the cache seems to be around over 300 gigabytes total written. Remember that I said the Samsung was like 108 for the one terabyte version? Well, this one's up to 300. So while it's slower, you can see the speeds here. It's gonna be like, this is saying up to around 5,000. You can see that it starts dropping off down here all the way after 300 gigabytes of data written. So this is what I'm trying to teach you is that no matter what drive you put in there, you have to look for stats like this and see how much cache it has and where the speeds drop off because it won't be the fault of the Acasis if it does. It's gonna be more the case, you know, the, the fault of the actual drive you put in it or the actual Mac mini. Okay, let's go ahead and do a speed test here with Blackmagic on this, with this other drive. And we're gonna see it gets very similar speeds to what it claimed here on Blackmagic, like, what is it, 4,600 on the writes, and then we're gonna see around 4,300 on the reads. So that actually makes a lot of sense to begin with. Okay, the very first test we're gonna do is we're gonna take data from the Mac Mini, and we're gonna drop it over here to the Acasis again with the Western Digital Drive. And we're gonna let this go for a second as I talk about this. But again, we're moving data over to the drive over there. This is a slower drive in general. So we're gonna see if it comes anywhere close to the Samsung drive here. Now we're up around, what, 12, 13 seconds, but it looks like it's finishing fairly quickly. We're up to about 80 or 90 uh, gigabytes transferred already. So let's see where this hash is out here. 20 seconds to do that. So moving data from the Mac mini to the enclosure, about 20 seconds, 20 seconds overall. So what does that equate? Again, since we're moving data that way, it, you know, we're not really gonna be affected by the Mac Mini that much. So what we actually got is around 5,000 megabytes per second with that equation. Really, I mean, I was a little bit maybe slow in the timer, so maybe around 4,900, I did it a couple times. So 4,900 megabytes per second when you're transferring it to the Acasis, even with that slower drive. Okay, now if we actually move data from the Acasis and we transfer it over to the Mac Mini over there, again, we're gonna run to the Mac Mini issue. So let, go look at my screen here. I already started it so that we have to wait for it, but I'm moving it over to the Mac Mini this time. And it took about 28 seconds, 28.6 seconds. You can see it there. And let's find out what that equates to. All right, you can see actually that that comes out to 3,500 megabytes per second, which is a little bit slower. And what I'm telling you basically is it wasn't the fault of the Acasis there. It was the fault of basically the actual Mac Mini that throttles when you're copying to it. As we saw, it got almost the full speed of the drive, whatever drive you put in there, when you actually copy data to the Acasis because it's not being affected by the Mac Mini's drive. And this is what you have to take away from this. This thing actually works really well. It just depends on the drive you put in it and the computer you're copying to, and it can do it all. I mean, it's got all the throughput that you need in here so far with the testing. Okay, so what do we actually learn here? <laughs> Let's just wrap this up. The actual hard drive speed over there of the Mac Mini, M4 Pro Mac Mini makes a major difference. And if you get the 512 or the one terabyte or the two terabyte, the cache limits on those things go way up. So the bigger the drive, the faster it's gonna be when you actually write to the Mac Mini. That's number one. Number two, the drive that you actually put into the Acasis has a cache limit as well. Look up the cache. If the cache is 100 gigabytes, 
it's going to slow down after 100 gigabytes, even when you're copying to it, because the drive on here slows down. That's another thing. Obviously, that's important as well. So you got to think about that. Also, you got to make sure this stays cool. If you don't cool correctly, it gets too hot. You don't put the thermal tape on. Obviously, the drives can thermal throttle as well. You're not always going to get those speeds over a long period of time if you're doing major, major copies. So just keep in mind that that's one other thing. Plus, if you have billions of files, instead of just copying a few, that can make a difference as well. Okay, so what are the drives I'd actually recommend for this enclosure? Well, first of all, I had the ones in stock there and you saw the results there. So if you like that, you can go ahead and buy those. But there's some better ones I'd probably buy first. The first one here is gonna be the Samsung Evo 990 Pro. Now, hear me out. You don't want the, you know, you don't want it to have that kind of metal heat sink. You want to get the standard version of it so it fits in the enclosure. But you want to get the two terabyte version because of that cache or higher two or four terabyte version of that drive. And the reason for that is because if you're spending so much money on a Thermal 5 enclosure, you might as well get at least two or four terabytes and the extra cache to make the speed go up, right? The second drive I would actually probably pick up is going to be the Western Digital Black SN850. Again, two terabytes or the four terabyte version of that. Now, this could take up to eight terabytes as well on this specific enclosure. But those are, I mean, obviously, if you can find one, you can throw that in there as well. But those are the drives I kind of recommend because they're, you know, they're the ones that would work the best, I think. And also, keep in mind that you don't want the metal heat sinks on them because they probably won't fit in here. So get the standard version of those drives, not the ones made for gaming and stuff. Make sure it doesn't have that metal enclosure around it or you may not get it in here. So at the end of the day, do I recommend the Acasis enclosure sitting right here? For sure. It looks like it works really, really well for what I'm throwing at it. And the only thing you got to really worry about is what you're actually putting in it and what you're actually connecting to with the drive over there. If those things are good, you're going to get the speeds out of this thing because it's not really the bottleneck at all. So I do recommend this. I mean, I've only, you know, limited testing so far. I mean, I've only had this for, you know, a little short while. So I haven't had a long term review. Obviously, it could break in a couple weeks or something, and I wouldn't know that. But I'm just giving you my initial review here. And as far as the speeds, it doesn't seem like that's the limiting factor at all. It just seems like it's either going to be the cache limit on the internal drive or the cache limit over there on the Mac mini. And I hope this all makes sense. This is going to help you understand how you pick these drives for an enclosure like this. And what you really want to blame if you see problems, test a lot of different things. And ultimately, you're probably going to find the solution. Okay, I hope this helps everybody out. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.